Welcome to a second example of surface integrals where the surface is given explicitly. So if our surface is given by z equals g of x, y, and the following conditions are met, we can rewrite the double integral of f of x, y, z integrated with respect to s as a double integral over the region r in the x, y plane by replacing z with g of x, y, and then replacing differential s with this extra integrating factor, differential a or differential a would be dx dy or dy dx. And in part one, we also discussed where this Jacobian or extra integrating factor came from. Let's take a look at our example. We want to integrate the function f of x, y, z over the given surface in the first octant. So we can rewrite this double integral over the surface s as a double integral over the region r in the xy plane, where our function will become f of x comma y comma g of x y, where g of x y is equal to z, so we have four minus two x minus two y, and then we have our Jacobian, or extra integrating factor of one plus the partial derivative of g with respect to x squared, well that's gonna be negative two squared plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y squared, that's also going to be negative two. And here we'll integrate with respect to y first and then x. Now for this problem, to determine the limits of integration for y and x, we're going to have to look at the xy trace of the given surface. So if we set z equal to zero and move the y term to the left side, we would have two y equals negative two x plus four, Go ahead and divide everything by two. So we have y equals negative x plus two. So our xy trace would have a y-intercept of two and a slope of negative one. So it's gonna pass through the point two, zero. So this xy trace should help us determine the limits of integration for y and x. So for y, it's gonna start at zero and go up to the line, where the line must be expressed as a function of x. So it'll be from zero all the way to negative x plus two, or just two minus x. And then for x, the limits of integration will be from zero to two. Let's go ahead and continue this on the next page. So here we have the square root of one plus four plus four. That's gonna be the square root of nine, so we have an extra factor of three. Now let's go back and take a look at our function f. f of x, y, z was just equal to x times y. So this problem, we don't even need to use the z-coordinate, so we have x, y, dy, dx. We'll first integrate this back to y, so we'll have x, y squared over two. Replacing y with two minus x, we're gonna have x times the quantity two minus x squared all over two, and then when y is zero, this will be zero. So we multiply this out, we're gonna have four minus four x plus x squared, and then we still have to multiply it by x. So we'll have four x minus four x squared plus x to the third. Let's go ahead and factor the one half out, so this will be three halves. So here we'll have four times x squared over two, or two x squared, minus four thirds x cubed, plus x to the fourth over four. So when x is two, we'll have four times two, that's eight, 
minus here we'll have 8 times 4, that's 32 thirds. And here we're going to have 16 divided by 4, that's 4. Next to 0, we have 0. So we have 3 halves times, this will be 12 minus 32 thirds. That gives us 4 thirds. And this simplifies nicely, so we have a value of 2. That'll do it for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at when the surface is defined parametrically. Thank you for watching.